Well, looky what we have here. Hey, how are you? Man, it's good to see you guys. Well, while you're here, I want to show you my new Benchmade. Specifically, the 560 Freak, which is manufactured right here in the good old US of A. It is a manual action axis lock. And that action, well, it speaks for itself. Absolutely incredible. I mean, it requires no wrist flick whatsoever. Just thumb. Look at that. And I'm bad at doing this. Like, I always have to, like, throw some wrist into it whenever I'm deploying a knife like this. But, nope. Makes me look like a pro. Now Benchmade decided to go with CPM S30V as the blade steel, which is a mighty fine choice. And that blade is actually riding on bronze bushings. And as long as we're looking at the pivot here, you can adjust it with a number eight Torx bit from just the one side. Now the blade has a satin finish, plain edge, that's a hollow ground drop point. And yes, there is a little bit of a sharpening choil for those of you sharpening people out there. There's a little bit of jimping that appears on the thumb ramp, which actually feels really nice. And you know what, to be honest though, I don't know how necessary it really is because, I don't know, it just kind of seems like overkill. Now you might've noticed that the, uh, I'm deploying this blade with a thumb stud. but you can also depress the axis lock and kind of swing it out that way as well. I always dig knives that have multiple deployment options. There is an external stop pin. If you can see that there, which is about, uh, I don't know, medium thickness. But what's really cool about the stop pin is that it is adjustable. See that with a number six Torx bit from either side. Now this blade is 3.6 inches long with a cutting edge of about three and a half inches. The spine thickness is three millimeters and the blade width is 1.19 inches or roughly 30 millimeters. Now these handle scales are made out of grivery and what Benchmade is calling VersaFlex. You may be asking yourself, what the heck is VersaFlex? Or what is Grivery for that matter? Well, short answer, rubber and plastic. Now there are some nested liners in there I don't know if you guys can see that, but they only take up about half of the insides here. 
the liners do not go they, it, they do not run from tip to butt so what would we call that partially nested liners I guess the centering on this guy yeah a little off a little off to the left but you know what it actually and I hate to say it but it's kind of what I expect from Benchmade I mean if I get a Benchmade knife and it's dead on centered then that that would be a surprise so I hate to say it but yeah I do expect anytime I pick up a Benchmade knife that the centering is going to be off a little bit now the back of the handle here is partially open construction because that backspacer runs up about halfway the clip the stock clip that comes on the freak is that nasty friggin uh, split arrow pocket clip which I I can't stand it I know some people really like it I am not one of those so needless to say that clip did not last too long on my freak yeah just not a fan of the split arrow clip from Benchmade and not to mention that you know when that clip was on here you know there was a decent amount of handles sticking out of the pocket which you know drives me nuts Did I show you guys the little bit of jimping here on the spine? Looks like it's kind of on the liner. Again, I don't know how necessary it is seeing that the scales are basically rubber. But they put it on there anyway. While we're looking at the spine, actually measures, the spine thickness is uh, 0 0.65 inches, or roughly 16 and a half millimeters. Now when the freak is closed, it's 4.86 inches with a width across just under one and a half inches, 1.4 inches or 36.5 millimeters. Overall length in the open position is almost eight and a half inches. It's 8.46. Now the weight is impressive considering you know this is a 3 point 3 point 6 inch blade oh come on there we go 3.7 ounces and I mean this this is I mean it's a big knife so that weight I don't know that's pretty good in my book now the 560 freak can be purchased for about $110 which uh, I guess it's fair 
I mean, you are getting, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a premium blade steel. Uh, the handle is, you know, basically made from rubber and plastic. So I guess, I, I mean, maybe 110 is a little on the high side, but you know what? That did not deter me, obviously, from purchasing it, so. Now there are a couple different versions of the 560 Freak. There is a, uh, a black coated plain edge and a serrated with the black coating. Oh, and there's also the uh, serrated in the satin finish as well. Now, as with every knife, there are a few things that I'm not crazy about. One of those issues we had already discussed, and that being the split arrow uh, pocket clip, which that problem has been remedied. Now, when you are extracting this knife from your pocket, because of the rubber scales, it kind of gets caught on your pocket material. Now, I've heard that that does get better with time and use, but I just wanted to point that out so you guys are aware. Now, <laughs> this rubber is pretty much a lint magnet. So whatever debris you have on, in your pocket will be stuck to the scales of the freak. I guarantee it. Let me bring in Doug Ritter Griptilian because it's pretty much the closest that I found uh, in comparison to the uh, to the freak. Now I've heard some people mention that this could possibly be a Griptilian killer. Uh, you know I don't know I'm bad at forecasting that kind of stuff but. I will tell you that the handle of the 560 is not as chunky as on the Griptilian. So while the Freak has a longer handle, it's not as thick, takes up a little bit less room in the pocket. And the blade on the Griptilian is a little bit shorter as well than the uh, than the Freak. Now, one area of concern for me that we'll all have to keep our eye on is the durability of the Versaflex. Because you guys know, I mean, what happens to rubber as it ages. I mean, it splits, it cracks, it tears, it peels. So, I don't know. Only time will tell if these scales hold up. So we'll see. So overall, you know what? I do recommend this knife at $110. I mean, you're getting a quality blade steel. A decent sized knife. With quality materials. 
So, you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to uh, comment. Comment, like, subscribe. I do read all the comments and respond to all of them. So, I would love to hear from you guys. So, thanks again for uh, stopping by and for coming out to play today. I will uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.